Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video from my sub-challenges series where I show one specific challenge and break down all the sub-challenges that lie within it. And on this video, it's the Invested Challenge that gets my full attention. Now, throughout all my time playing these challenges, I've never really taken the time to go into great detail about the sub-challenges that need to be completed. Well, all that is going to change, as I intend on showing all 12 challenges in this video series and then breaking down and showing every sub-challenge completed in as easy a way as possible. And trust me when I say this, folks, a lot of these sub-challenges can be simplified. Now, I do already have a challenge on screen that is completed to a gold standard, and there is a very good reason for this one being completed first, because it's not essential but I highly recommend that you have this one in place before going for any of the Endless Horde challenges. And I will explain more about that one later, but let's get to the sub-challenges. On screen, you can actually see a list of what is required. You have Breathless, Mass Destruction, Claustrophobic, and In The Zone. Now, the requirements that you see on screen right now are actually the bronze level requirements. I'm not interested in those, I'm only interested in the gold requirements. So let's take a look at what is actually required to get the job done to a gold standard. Right then, now that the gold requirements for these sub-challenges are on screen, I'm going to take the time to explain what is exactly required of each of these four sub-challenges. And I'll start with one of the most famous sub-challenges of all, and that is Breathless. This basically requires you to get 75 kills with oxygen tanks in a zone. And the inner zone part is very important because if you're not in an active zone when making these kills, they will count for nothing for this particular sub-challenge. Now, the good news is there are 13 of these tanks located around the infested area and there is a fantastic workaround which makes the zone process so much easier. <laughs> now then, on to the next one and possibly one of the most annoying sub-challenges I have ever taken on. It's called Claustrophobic and this basically requires you to get 350 kills inside buildings. Now, the good news is you do not require a zone to be active when you're doing this, so you don't have to worry about the zone part. But it does take quite a bit of time to get this done. However, there are some very interesting things when doing this sub-challenge that make it a whole lot easier if you know how. And I'm going to show you when I show my run on this particular sub-challenge. Now, on to the next sub-challenge, which is Mass Destruction. This requires you to get 300 Freaker kills using explosive kills. And although it does sound like quite a high number, it's not quite as bad as it sounds, given that you have a great number of barrels, crates and tanks in the infested area. And as well as this, you do have at your disposal grenades, pipe bombs, proximity bombs and remote bombs that can all be used to go towards explosive kills. The only two throwable items that do not contribute towards these are Molotovs and Napalm Molotovs. And finally, in the zone, this requires you to get 400 kills while you are inside a zone. This does sound like a tall order, but trust me when I say there is a workaround that makes this particular sub-challenge an absolute breeze. Now, the only downside to this particular sub-challenge is that it can be quite lengthy. However, because of this, I am actually going to take the time to show this sub-challenge being taken out at the same time as Mass Destruction. I don't normally do this with the sub-challenges, but these particular two, it is definitely worth doing together because you will save yourself an incredible amount of time, and especially when you see how it is done. Anyways, that is all the sub-challenges explained. On to the setup. Right then, the essentials that I recommend that you have before taking on this challenge. You honestly don't need much, but if you have level 3 rings, then fantastic. But this is the one that I recommend that you do have in place every time. And it is a gold score on the Ambush Camp Rush Challenge. 
when you get it, it unlocks this patch perk and it is plus three bullet penetration, which is huge. It basically means taking out a lot of these sub challenges a whole lot quicker than what they will be if you don't have this patch in place. Now, as well as this, in terms of rings, there is only two rings that you ever want to have when taking on the Endless Horde challenges, and these are bullets and ram. Now, because I have actually completed um, the Ambush Camp Rush challenge, I have actually got some credits which I can spend on the rings, albeit it's only going to be level one, but that will be fine. It will do the job. And as well as this, always change your character right. to either Ricky or um, Sarah. They are both faster characters than Deacon. And on this particular challenge, it's very much worth having. So now that the setup's in place, let's get started. And I am going to start with the one that gives everybody the most problems, and that is Breathless. There is a fantastic workaround for this, so just watch and learn. <laughs> Right then, on to the first sub-challenge, which is Breathless. This requires you to take out 75 of the Freakers using oxygen tanks while in the zone. So, to start with, I am actually going to open the zone, but I'm taking the time to get that tank out of there, using the Molotov to um, basically start burning the nest, and then getting a tractor down straight away. What this will do is basically when they come in, they'll group nicely, so I'm basically just going to throw the tank in, as it's dropping down, get the gun out and look at that. That's 15 kills already. I have a second tank right there. I'm not going to bother moving that. That's very nice. That's given us uh, a few more kills here. So, so far, just after two tanks, I have 26 kills. And because this zone's going to take a little while in uh, going away, I'm going to take the time to use a third tank. And watch this. I'm basically going to throw it over, pick a weapon, slow down and then basically explode the tank and look at that i got 28 kills with that one so already i've got 53 of the 75 required and at this point now i'm just basically looking to waste a bit of time because i want this zone to close completely and this is the big workaround that i keep on talking about which will help hugely on two of the sub challenges and it's basically once this zone has completely closed I'm going to show you all a way in which to permanently open a zone for the entire play area. Now, I constantly keep going back to this area here while I'm uh, just messing around with the horde because there is only one way to get onto this roof section. So it's quite a safe way of basically getting a few kills and at the same time just getting all the horde behind you. And that's what I want here. I've got the time now as well. I've got over 30 seconds to get this done. In order to open the zone, you basically have to go back in where the nest was, go inside. When you see that blue light, that is it. You have activated a permanent open zone for the entire play area. So, you'll probably notice now as well, any kills that I'm making now will also contribute to the sub-challenge called In The Zone. But I'm going to end this particular challenge now very quickly because just watch this. I'm just looking to get a bit more time. Now I am looking to get another tank, which is right there. And then I'm heading down to this area. I want to get on top of this roof section and I'm going to throw the tank at the oncoming horde. And just watch what happens. So it's a quick throw, quickly choose a weapon, go into slow mode. And look at that, 40 kills. I have basically just taken out the breathless challenge with four oxygen tanks. And there we go, that is how it is done. If you're really worried about the beginning part, which some people might feel is a little bit tricky, just basically go for the trick where you get the permanent open zone and just work at your leisure. Now then, because I've actually managed to get a silver score on Infested here, I'm going to take the time to look at the patch that I have now unlocked for Infested. Uh, I think it's something to do with focus, if I remember rightly, and... There we go. Focus regenerates faster. That is very handy to have, especially as the next two sub-challenges that I'm going to be taking on are basically in the zone and mass destruction. So there is a very good reason why I'm taking these both out together. So let's do this. 
Right then, mass destruction and in the zone. Here we go. Just to show exactly where the figures are going to come up for each of those, I've got them on screen. But what I'm actually doing is opening a zone to start with, and I'm just going to let that close. And while that is closing, there are a number of items that I want to collect. So I'm going for the IDF pop first. I'm then going to head across the road here because there is a remote bomb and a grenade that I want from this particular uh, shop. After that, I'm looking to head out the back way. And I'm heading up to the next house right up here. And it is basically the left window that I'm looking to go through. And immediately on my left, once I get in, there is another grenade. You might as well take the time at the start to get these items. I've also picked up a Molotov, which will do me no good at all for the mass destruction. But once I have created uh, a permanent open zone, then the Molotovs will certainly go towards any kills for the in the zone sub challenge. And the last item that I'm looking to get is another grenade that is in this house right over here. And there we go, that is me pretty much set up. So now I'm looking to get back down to the other uh, the other side of this area. And while doing this, I will take the time to climb over a few things because uh, stamina conservation is very important. And I'm actually starting to get a little bit low on time, so I am going to have to uh, take out some more of these freakers. But that's not a problem. And then again, I'm going to take the time to use this area here. It is so handy. Only one way to get up uh, to here, so the horde will congregate nicely here. And as well as this, it's a nice way to gather them up so that you can safely get to other areas, which I'm now about to do. So I'm heading back over to this house that I originally uh, started the open zone from. Again, going through here, as soon as you see that blue light, you're good. I have now created a permanent open zone for the entire play area. So at this point now, all I am thinking about is concentrating on the mass destruction uh, sub-challenge. Because any kills that I get using explosives will automatically apply to the in the zone challenge as well. So you are saving a massive amount of time by uh, taking out these two together. They do work hand in hand once you have an open zone. So um, at this point now, I'm just looking to basically run the, the horde around this area. And yeah, definitely going to take advantage of these attractors that I have. Very nice. So at this point, I'm now well underway. And I take a few slaps in, unfortunately. That can't really be helped, but it's not a problem. Just looking to head over this way, and yeah, I'm really looking to get the numbers again before uh, starting any more explosives. <laughs> so at this point, I'll just take a time to uh, work on a little bit of uh, stamina conservation. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. So now... I'm going to use the second of my three attractors and it's not a bad idea to use it here. Yep, very nice, 19 kills. Um, of course, while basically trying to take out these two uh, sub-challenges, I am not remotely interested in the multiplier. In fact, the beauty of all these uh, sub-challenges is you can take them all out without having to worry about the multiplier. It's only a gold score where all of a sudden you really need to be thinking about that. But uh, yeah, I've grabbed a, a tank and I'm going to use it again. It's a very effective way of doing it and I'll be quite honest, not that many kills considering. In uh, the previous challenge, uh, I used a tank there and got 40 kills. So. Um, maybe should have waited until there was a few more uh, freakers about. So at this point, I do have a grenade in my hand, and then I realise, no, nope, I've got to take care of that crate there first, because otherwise I'm just wasting one of my explosives. So the next time I come off the roof section there, yes, I'll definitely use that area um, in order to get uh, kills with a grenade. So again, I'm just working them around here. And again, working on the stamina. And yeah, I've got another barrel here. I might as well use it. So, 
take that one out. Just try and get as many of them around there as possible. 14, that isn't too bad. So again, it's back to my tried and tested favourite spot. <laughs> which is this area right here. So yeah, I really have the numbers here, so I can go to town with the grenades. Yep, there's one. I should get 90 very quick um, kills for mass destruction here. And um, <laughs> that's a slight disaster. I actually got away with it. I think I got 25 kills there, um, as opposed to the maximum 30. But unfortunately, uh, the grenade bounced off one of the freakers and uh, didn't go in the desired spot, but never mind. Now, at this point, I'm having a look to see where uh, the rest of them are. So again, I'll just use the last tractor here. I'm not really that fussed about uh, placing them beside barrels every time. There are so many options, and when you start getting the, the hordes in the large numbers, which I now am, um, it's not too much of an issue at all. And already, I've, I've still got some fantastic options available. I don't think I've used any of my attractor bombs. I haven't. I'm going to remedy that right now. These also count towards the mass destruction. And right now, I am very close to getting this job done. So I'm, yep, yeah, I'm sitting at 281 on mass destruction and 327 out of the 400 for in the zone. So this should all be over very soon. <laughs> Now I am very aware that I have another two attractor bombs that I could potentially use but I decide to go with the proximity bombs because all the freakers are still behind me so there's no real danger as long as I get the dive roll in place. And that is the mass destruction sub challenge taken care of. And as you can see I've only got about another 40 kills to make in order to get the in the zone sub challenge also taken care of. I was hoping I would get them all with that Napalm Molotov, but unfortunately their numbers are not huge at this point. There is more freakers heading this way, but it doesn't matter. There we go, that is both sub-challenges taken care of. So at this point, done and dusted. They can do what they like. And that is a job very well done indeed. And of course, with the added bonus of a gold score on the challenge. Very nice. So, I'm going to go back to the infested screen here and just take a look at the patch now that I have it to its maximum level. And there we go. Very nice. That is uh, focus regenerates 20% faster. And as well as this, because my rep level has gone up, I can actually upgrade the two rings that I have. That will set me up very nicely for the last sub-challenge, which is claustrophobic. Right then, on to the last sub-challenge, which is claustrophobic. 350 kills required from inside buildings. Here we go. I'm looking to get the IDF pop very quickly, because it is a more effective weapon than the one that I start off with. Now, from here, I'm ideally looking to just get these Freakers a little bit better bunched before I start to take them on at the three main buildings that I'm going to do all the damage from. Now, some interesting things to know. And the first one is going to um, be very evident very quickly. Although the sub-challenge claims that you have to take them out from inside buildings, if you actually get an area like this, which is basically uh, a decking area, but actually has a roof over it, this actually counts as being inside the building. So from here, I've got an attractor down, and I'm basically going to go to town on this lot. And you can see already, that the count is going up very nicely. I've already got, yeah, that's a brilliant start. I've already got 50 kills. Once they get to this section of the decking where there is no roof, the, the shots basically don't count. So, from here, I'm actually looking to use the next building's uh, decking area <laughs> in the same way. And this is the next very important piece of information. Although the Freakers have to be inside the building, you don't. You can shoot them from outside as long as they are inside a building section, it's all good. So, 
again, I'm going to get another tractor in place here. And now I'm just going to go to town. And again, this is going nicely. Albeit, I maybe should have waited to get a few more of their numbers. But they are coming over. And again, once they get outside of uh, that roof section, that's it. The shots no longer count. Now I have seen on the minimap there that another two hordes have spawned. So I really want to get those grouped with these current freakers that I have before starting my next attack. So That's what I'm eventually going to use the attractor bomb, but I'm not going to be using it yet. Here they come. Now I've got the numbers. Now I'm looking to make my next play. And it is this building again, but as opposed to the last two attempts, I'm actually going to go inside. And uh, yeah, I didn't realise I didn't have the attractor bomb actually armed there. So I'm going to get about here, get a few shots in. I don't want to do too many because I'm looking for the attractor bomb to do its thing. And now I'm going to go to town. And would you fucking believe it, the gun is not loaded. Okay, that is a bit of a wasted opportunity there. Never mind, it's time to move on. So again, a little bit of climbing, that just helps with uh, the stamina. And uh, from here, I'm really just looking to get them bunched again. Um, at least with this particular sub-challenge, you don't have to worry about multiplier or pretty much anything else. All, all my focus is on is just basically getting them into these inside areas of the buildings. And this is the next one that I'm now going to work on. This is fantastic. As I said before, the Freakers have to be inside the building, but you don't. So I can pick them off from here. And you will see I'm still doing damage. I'm still getting the kills for being inside the building. Even though I am outside. And technically, so are the Freakers. But as long as there's a roof over their head there, Yep, it counts as being inside. It's a bit of a strange one. So at this point now, yeah, uh, I do have a bit of a break. Oh, and here they come. <laughs> now, there are some buildings up this way as well that I could use if I want to. But I generally like to stick to the three buildings uh, down in this section. Now, I'm going to head back over to this uh, building over here one more time. And I'm going to use uh, an attractor bomb. I've got two of them left. I'm not really going to get away with using this uh, particular building for much longer because there is such a pile of bodies that it's getting uh, a little bit difficult now. And stupidly, I'm not even sure if this is actually going to count because where I have basically dropped that uh, attractor, I don't know if it is going to register. And I'm very lucky it actually has. So at this point, yeah, I'm just building up a bit more time. And now I'm looking to head back over to the building across the road here. Yep, one more attractor bomb. I'm definitely going to use this here. And again, I'm getting good numbers here. Okay, so at this point I'm actually just taking the time now to check exactly what I have left to take care of here. And I'm pleased to say I have less than 100 kills to go now. So I'm going to use this uh, section here just to bunch up the Freakers, but not only that, get them all coming from one direction. Because I'm about to use the last of the three houses that I've been uh, using to take out this sub-challenge. And it's this one right here. So I'm just checking to see what I actually have in the way of throwables to possibly use. I'm actually going to hit them hard with gunplay here. I might even uh, bring a, an APAM Molotov into the mix. In fact, what the hell, they're coming in in large numbers now, so why not? This should help the, the cause. And this house, very strangely, sometimes doesn't register kills when you think they will. I've not had an instance of it just yet, but in previous runs I have seen it happen where I've been firing away like crazy and it's not registering anything at all. Um, so a little bit of a bizarre one could be that the 
Uh, sub challenge is slightly glitched when it comes to this house, but uh, yeah, at this point here, um, it's going quite well now. I need less than 40 kills, so I'm going to try and get some of them over here and uh, do my best to get some kills uh, through this pile of bodies. Yeah, that's probably going to be the last time that I head over to that particular section. Now at this point, yeah, unfortunately I've got the same problem here now as well. I have such a pile up of bodies that uh, <laughs> it's starting to work against me. Now, I do have the option, I could go up to the top section of uh, this infested area and use one of the houses at the top, but I'm just going to persevere and uh, take out the last of them down here. And again, I've got them all coming uh, in the one direction now, so yeah. Let's head through this house, get ready, give them hell. You can see there, there it goes again, all of a sudden, that just seemed to stop. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sure I had at least five or six hits there uh, on Freakers, killing them inside that building, and they simply did not register, so not happy about that at all. However, this is just about the uh, job done. So, yeah, this is going to be overkill, but what the hell. All the bits now are piling up with the bodies. I'm just going to basically wait until I've got at least five in that section there. Throw the napalm molotov, get out of there, and hopefully this will finally get the job done. And it has. That is it. Uh, an annoying sub-challenge, but that is claustrophobic and taken care of. Very nice. Job done. And there we have it. That is all of the infested sub-challenges taken care of to a gold standard. And as well as this, I've also managed to get a gold score on the infested challenge, so I don't even need to show a run at the very end of this video. And I'm sure you'll all agree that some of these methods do make these sub-challenges an awful lot easier than what they probably should be. But that brings me very nicely to the end of the video. All I have to say is thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care.